I always feel, you know, even on, on Breaking Bad, like I, those, those days on that show that were the toughest days, those were the days that Cranston and I would sing show tunes in between. Like, I always feel like if. Did you sing anything from Dear Evan Hansen? He came to see it. Well, him. it was before that. First question is, I just spoke to Leela, your showrunner, who said she was at first hesitant to take on this project because you know, it, it is very tragic and you're dealing with the loss of a daughter. Uh, you both have kids. Did you have to think twice about whether or not you wanted to kind of emotionally jump into this? My first thought was I need to do it like because it's something every parent thinks about. And I read when I once I read the book, I was like, I, I have to. Um, and then I also try and take care of myself because I know how invested I get when I'm working on something. And, mm-hmm. and I was like, OK, do I really want to go there? Do I really want to? do that to myself? Am I going to jinx anything? Am I going to, but I just, I was like, I I felt like I had to, if I, I would have been, I would have regretted it if I didn't go into it. And I'm really, really glad that I did. I needed, I needed to do this for sure. Like Betsy, but for different reasons. Um, There, there are so many like little moments in my life that I don't think I ever, I think I compartmentalize and I never really dealt with. And so dealing, doing this and knowing the material that I think my biggest reservation to be honest with you, was whether or not you could kind of extract these things in front of in very vulnerable things in front in a, in a safe environment. Right. But what's wonderful is that um, it was so incredibly beautiful. The cast is so wonderfully uh, talented and and they were so willing and and open to, to dealing with this storyline. And then, of course, the crew, it's just they were so sensational. The directors took their time. I remember us, Betsy, packing her clothes and how that hit me in a way that I was not expecting at all and something I never even thought about. And it was there were no that was that no week. Love. And that was that we have that like was that week, week a really a tough week. We dealt it with. was like every tough, like all the toughest scenes we did. No at the end of it, we had a bottle of champagne. And we were like, what? <laughs> because right? it was, but not only because like there was relief that it was done, but there was also it was good. It was so mm. important to Michael and I because you want to do justice to these characters because even though, you know, it, it's, I know it, it's just a story, but they're very real to us. And that's what it, I think it takes to and make story is bigger than us. But story you want it, bigger. you want it to be, you want to do justice for anyone who's gone through this and, and play it as real as you can. Um, and so we were, we were happy after that crazy, crazy ass long week and a half. It, I was like, it was, I it was like you got slapped with, you know, hey, grief some more. Hey, right here. Hey, do this. Hey, yeah. turn on, turn on the faucet now, now, now. It was for a solid week, Owen. And then afterwards, I, I was in real. I was so we were exhausted, but we were so we felt good because so you know. we loved it. Yeah. Wow. Uh, you've both been a part of such long running shows, um, especially Michael, I think as well. Uh, is it harder to explore a character as much as you would like when you only have eight episodes as mm. this? That's such a fair thing to ask. Um, I you think- know, I, I always feel, you know, even on, on breaking bad, like I, those, those days on that show that were the toughest days, those were the days that Cranston and I would sing show tunes in between. Like, I always feel like, if did you sing anything from Dear Evan Hansen? He came to see. Well, it. it was before then. Did you see me? Were you in that? Oh, funny. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, listen, I have to. I can't let him get his head too big. Um, I feel like if I come up for air, I can go way down, you know, to wherever I need to go to, you know, those really dark, hard places. I feel like when you try and stay down there forever, live down there for a long time, it's hard to sustain that. So I think knowing I had a, I mean, listen, I'm going to go all in anyway, because it's just how I'm built, but um, I can't help myself even if I wanted to, and I don't want to do it differently, but I think knowing Okay, eight episodes, and then I get to go back to my life where I am not living this. Um, But it was just the writing was so good and the story was so good. You couldn't not go. But I we also had to come up and be able to 
enjoy the moments that were fantastic for this family so that you so that you can experience the fall and see what they're losing. Um, and I think we were successful in doing both of those things. For sure. I got to say with with I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about as the world turns with as the world turns, you're setting. And yes, we you you grab you've got 80 pages of dialogue or, or 20 pages of dialogue every day to memorize. And so you, your short-term memory is at its peak. You're throwing lines in, you're throwing them out, you're throwing them in, you're throwing them out. You don't have time really to dwell. You hit it, you get it right, you're gone. And so, yeah, you would, you, you would have seconds to dwell on, on story like this with Evan Hansen um, pretending that you're, or, or, or telling a story where in the fourth scene, I'm explaining to Evan Hansen how my son had, had killed himself yeah, that got really depressing really quick because substitution only works for so long. How many years? I don't know how you did that. How many years? I don't know how insane, you did that three years. That and so telling that story for three years, we Jennifer Laura Thompson and I, who played uh, uh, Cynthia and Larry, we got, we're like, listen, we can't sustain this. I got depressed after like the first two months. I'm like, we can't sustain this. We've got to find a way to, ha- to enjoy this moment. The show is so beautiful and it's helping so many people. And so that's when we decided we are going to be the most unprofessional actors backstage that you can imagine. And we cackled a lot, a lot like Betsy and I did in the Dominican every now and then. Sometimes we you just got it. You got it. Sometimes you have to find the funny you, you, things. That yes. You it's find. you've got to, you've got to, self-preserve there at that moment. Yeah. So if we lived in the depression that these two uh, characters had to deal with, um, which I never want to deal with in my life, um, then we would, we would, it would be very, very difficult to, to wake up the next morning and get out of bed. But the fact that we cackled and we enjoyed each other and the crew was wonderful, made it so much easier and very sustainable. That's great. That's uh, I think all I got for you. But oh no, we used up all your time. I, we used no, it's great. Uh, but I'm loving the show. You're both so wonderful in it. Congratulations on this. It's it's awesome.